Hi class! Welcome back! Now, we are going to have another new lesson here in Understanding the Self. Now, in our previous lesson, we were able to discuss the Chapter 2, Unpacking the Self, Lesson 1, The Physical and Sexual Self, Part 3, where we discuss the different methods or natural methods in birth control. And also, I was able to tap on the different the difference um, sexual disorders or sexual trans sexually transmitted diseases if one is active in sex. Now, in this lesson, we are going to discuss the chapter 2, Unpacking the Self, Lesson 1, The Physical and Sexual Self, Part 4. Now let's go to the next page. Alright. So in our previous presentation, we were able to discuss the natural methods. Now let's go to the artificial methods. So the artificial methods, contrary to the natural methods, consists of foreign objects that will be placed inside, a, inside the, our bodies to prevent pregnancies and, of course, um, sexually transmitted diseases. Also, it can also... Um, in the form of taking medications as well. So here in the artificial methods, we will explore more about this. So first, we have here is the oral contraceptives. Here in the Philippines, there are um, common contraceptives that can be bought over the counter. So some of that is the Dayan or the uh, I think the Dayan is the most expensive and uh, the most, uh, yes, the most expensive and can be easily bought in the counter. I'm not sure. So it, requir it requires, it, it is taken usually by women. So if a, if a male will purchase it, they will require a prescription from a doctor. But if you're a female and already in the legal age, you can buy the oral contraceptive, specifically Dayan, uh, in the uh, in our simple uh, pharmaceutical stores so that's for the oral contraceptives so make sure that you also read the manual before taking it okay again just a disclaimer I am not encouraging everyone or anyone in here to be active in sex and use the following I'm just informing everyone about the artificial methods uh, in case it one needed in the future going back so that's for the oral contraceptives next we have the transdermal patch the transdermal patch contra contraceptive patch is a safe and convenient birth control method that works really well if you always use it correctly you wear the patch on, a, on certain parts of your body and it releases hormones through your skin that prevents pregnancy that's why it's called the transdermal patch. Okay, um, so next we have here is the vaginal ring. Vaginal ring is a contraceptive ring which sits, which sits inside the vagina. It contains two hormones, the estrogen and the progestogen, and stop ovaries from releasing an egg each month. So the vaginal ring is placed inside on, inside the vagina only. All right. So just to make sure again or clarify, the vagina is uh, located uh, at the external part of the reproductive system of the female. Okay. And on the inside of it is what we call the cervix. In here, that's why it's called vaginal ring because it's only placed in the vagina. So it has the vaginal ring composed or releases. Uh, hormones, the estrogen and progestogen. So these hormones primarily roles, role is to stop the ovaries from releasing the egg each month. Okay, so in here it is inserted for three out of four weeks each month or it can be used continuously. Alright, so this inserted to three to four weeks only for others. Or for others, it can be used continuously. But of course, hygiene is also necessary. Uh, so I think it's better if it is changed regularly. 
here in our country, I'm not sure if vaginal rings are very popular because most of the time, contraceptive pills for women are commonly used. Next, we have the subdermal implants. These are birth control implants, are devices that go under a woman's skin. They release a hormone that prevents pregnancy. The implant is a plastic rod about the size of a matchstick. It contains a form of the hormone, progesterone, called etanogestrel. So, subdermal implants is a... Uh, a matchstick size uh, plastic rod that is placed under the skin of a woman all right and it releases uh, releases hormones uh, progesterone hormones uh, that uh, that is called ethanol and then this hormone prevents the woman from getting pregnant pregnant Next, we have the hormonal injections. The hormonal injections is the contra contraceptive injection. It's a shot that contains hormones, either a progestin alone or progestin and an estrogen together that stop your body from releasing eggs and thickens the mucus at the cervix. You need one shot either once every month or once every three months from a healthcare provider. So from its term, hormonal injections is an injection that contains hormones. So these hormones um, really uh, prevents the, the women from releasing eggs and also it thickens the mucus of the cervix. Further, it is only administered by a healthcare professional. So it, meaning one should have a prescription of it just to gain hormonal injections. Next, we have the IUD or the intrauterine device. Intrauterine device. An intrauterine device, also known as the intrauterine contraceptive device, IUCD or ICD, or COIL, is a small, often T-shaped birth control device that is inserted into the uter uterus to prevent pregnancy. IUDs are one form of long-lasting reversible birth control or LARC. Okay, so I've included a picture below. So as you can see, this is the women's reproductive system. Inside the uterus, coming from the vagina, straight to the uterus, going nearing before the fallopian tube, is the T-shape there is what we call the IUD. This device prevents the woman to, to become pregnant. So um, this can also be reversible, meaning it can be uh, removed if the woman wants to get pregnant. Okay, so that's why it's called LARC. It is a long-acting reversible birth control. So it can be removed. All right, so... Um, this is placed in a women's, uh, women's reproductive system to uh, prevent pregnancy. As per uh, my research, I believe the Philippines, but every bar barangay health centers are providing IUDs for free for some, for some mothers. Okay, so who weren't able to have or uh, yes, who weren't able to... Uh, to conduct or or uh, to do family planning with their husbands. So what the Barangay Health Centers are offering are free IUDs. Next we have the chemical barriers. Chemical barriers or spermicide, spermicides are sperm killing substances available as foams, creams, gels, films, or super, suppositories, which are often used in female contraception, in, conduct, in conjunction with mechanical barriers and other devices. Spermicides are usually available without a prescription or medical examination. Okay, so the chemical barriers in here, specifically known as the spermicides, are like creams, 
films just that is uh that is placed or put either in the woman's um or uh, either the male or the females uh reprodu uh genitals and it will prevent or uh, yes it w the ejaculation is still possible however it this chemical barriers will immediately kill the sperms before reaching the uterus or uh, yes or before fertilization occurs next we have the diaphragm using a diaphragm is a form of birth control it prevents pregnancy by creating a barrier between a woman's uterus and a man's sperm a diaphragm is a reusable dome-shaped cup it fits over the opening of the cervix it is common to use a diaphragm with sperm spermicide this is a gel cream or film that kills sperm so a diaphragm is placed at the opening of the cervix again the cervix is the one that connects between the vagina and the uterus so um the, the cervix uh the i mean the diaphragm is placed there and it can say contains spermicide which again spermicides are are the ones are, are are fluid that kills the sperm so the it is reusable and it's a uh, i think it's made of rubber all right so here's the picture of it so i i think the pink one is the um what they call the <laughs> the diaphragm and then the this the the other one is the vaginal ring okay so both are placed inside the woman's vagina the vaginal ring at the vagina only the diaphragm is at the cervix at is at the opening of the cervix of the female next we have the cervical cap a cervical cap is a reusable rubber cap that fits tightly over the cervix the cervical cap is inserted into the vagina with spermicide before sex to prevent pregnancy the cervical cap is a birth control contraceptive device that prevents sperm from entering the uterus so here the cervical cup from its term cervical it means it's, it is placed in the cervix so this is only this can be put before okay before coitus or before having sex so this cervical cup contains uh, so others I think others do not contain sperm spermicide but others do so others just to make sure not to get pregnant they include the spermicide or they yes they include spermicide in it before placing it inside the, the cervix all right again this is also a birth control that prevents pregnancy next also we have the very common male condoms a male condom is a thin sheath placed over the erect penis when left in place during sexual intercourse, oral sex, or anal sex, male condoms are an effective are effective way to protect yourself and your partner from sexually trans transmitted infections. Male condoms are also an effective way to prevent pregnancy. So the male condoms are very popular here in our country, here in the Philippines. So it can be purchased in any uh, pharmaceutical drug stores. Or even online I guess so again I believe everyone is already familiar with this so this place uh, uh, over the erected penis and then place uh, I mean that is uh, and then left while having sex okay so um, if if someone uh, I mean if people are having sex or partners are having sex make sure to have those <laughs> this is to prevent of course having STIs or the sexually transmitted infections or uh, to or in in general to prevent unwanted pregnancies okay so if you have male condoms we also have the female condoms a female condom is worn inside the vagina or anus to create a barrier to stop bodily fluids and and semen from entering the body they are made from a soft plastic material called nitrile so if there's a male condom we also have a female condom but this one is placed um, inside the vagina or the anus okay so this is to of course stop unnecessary 
body fluids that are or semen that uh, that will uh, that will produ uh, produce pregnancy and wanted pregnancy in the future. So this female condom is made of nitrile. So though these are called female condoms, they can be used by people of any gender for protection during anal sex. All right. So if we we if we have the artificial methods, we also have the surgical methods. Surgical methods um, means that this requires surgery or going under the knife. So first we have the vasectomy. A vasectomy can be performed in the clinic and involves making two small openings in the scrotum. After a vasectomy, the man may feel tenderness or bruising around the incision site. So in the vasectomy, it is usually given to to, to a man, okay? So usually they will just create two small openings in the scrotum. Okay, a vasectomy does not interfere with the ability of a man to have an erection or the quantity of his ejacul ejaculation fluid. After a man has a vasectomy, another second form of birth control should be used until his ejaculate fluid is found to be free from sperm. This which usually takes 10 to 20 ejaculations. So just to give you a heads up, surgical methods is irreversible. Unlike artificial and natural methods, it can be reversible. Meaning, uh, if one uses the natural and artificial method, they can still get pregnant. Okay? Uh, but in the surgical method, the individual or the, the woman will no longer get pregnant because this is actually a, a form of uh, removing the sperm or the egg or, unless, uh, or, or things that can make someone pregnant. So going back, in vasectomy, in here, there should be two ways. Okay, so once the, the this incision is made in the scrotum, the man should also have another birth control method until the ejaculation or the fluid that is being released uh, found no no more sperm. Okay, so it, it states here that it takes 10 to 20 ejaculations. So it will make the man infertile for the rest of his life. <laughs> Next, we have the tubal ligation. Or in short term, or in simple term, here in the Philippines, it's called tubes tied. So, tubal ligation is also known as having one's tube, tubes tied or having a tubal. Tubal ligation is for women and like a vasectomy should be considered a permanent form of birth control. Alright, so in here, uh, the, the tubal ligation is for women. In here, the, um, the tubes, uh, the, uh, uh, they tie on, uh, uh, they tie, I, I believe, the ones that is being tied in here is the fallopian tubes. This is to prevent the release of the ovaries. Okay, so this uh, this is actually a permanent form of birth control for women. Okay, again, it's irreversible. Next, we have the hysteropic, hysteros, hysteroscopic sterilization. Hysteroscopic sterilization is a non-surgical form of permanent birth control in which a physician inserts a 4 cm or 1.6 inch long metal coil into each, of each one of a woman's two fallopian tubes via scope passed through the cervix into the uterus and from there into the openings of the fallopian tubes. Over the next few months, Tissue grows over the coil to form a plug that prevents fertilized eggs from traveling from the ovaries to the uterus. So in here, um, hystero, uh, hystero, hysterocopy, I think it's hysterocopy. <laughs> um, uh, when, uh, when, I believe it's called the catheter, is being placed inside the woman's vagina uh, through its cervix, uh, uh, uterus and into the fallopian tube 
So this will serve as um, this will serve as a guide. Okay, uh, this is a long metal that will serve as a guide to form a coil. Uh, so the 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 women's reproductive system uh, will form for uh, uh, will form a coil around this metal, and from there, that coil will prevent the ovaries to re to release an egg cell, and because of that, this is also reversible, though it's not surgical. Uh, this will prevert, prevent the women getting pregnant. Next, we have the hysterectomy. A hysterectomy. Oh, that's what I'm mentioning a while ago. Hysterectomy. Okay, so this one is, I think it's different. So, hysterectomy is the surgical removal of a woman's uterus. And depending on her overall health status and the reason for the operation. Perhaps her ovaries as well. For practical purposes, no woman has had a hysterectomy can become pregnant. It is an, a, an irreversible method of birth control and absolute sterilization. So hysterectomy in here is the removal of the woman's uterus. And others, it is the remo removal of the ovaries of the woman. Hysterectomy is often used with uh with women who who are experiencing cancer in the reproductive system so it uh because it's the necessary parts or the important parts in getting pregnant is being removed the the pregnancy or that that makes the women sterile throughout the life right so this is a, an irreversible method of birth, birth control and no woman who had hysterectomy ever get pregnant. Alright, so that is, this is the last slide for this presentation. So thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, please let me know. And then I'll be seeing you again in our next video. Thank you very much. I'll see you then. Bye for now.